So we will stand up all together, raise our eyes up to the sky with faith and love in our hearts. And we will embark. Oh, oh, oh. We will be. My fellow Latter day Saints, Kenzie Retro, the woman entertainer here, the most inspirational woman in all of our shit here. Back once again, it is Wednesday reactions time once again, and I thought I'd uh, react to a video that the PlayStation Access team put up uh, just yesterday. Yeah, um, it's about 25 minutes long, so bear with me. So, anyway, uh, basically, PlayStation Access they have this thing the Friday features, um, but they also have this Tuesday checklist as well. And today, and today, we're going to have yesterday's checklist they had of 90s games that show how lucky we are now. This is going to be interesting. So, let's change setup. Boom. Let's get started. Hello, welcome to PlayStation Access. I'm Nathan, and this is the Tuesday Checklist, the weekly show where we take inspiration from a recent or upcoming game, basically any game, and then talk about other games. Anyway, this week, after a go on the Resident Evil 2 remake at E3, we went back to the original, which led to this discussion about 90s games that show how good we have it now. Allow me to explain. Go ahead, me. So, the game which I have chosen this week, a 90s game which shows how lucky we are now. And the uh, comparison was extremely stark because Dave, you and I played this game in a remastered version on PlayStation 4 at E3, yep. Resident Evil 2. Oh yeah. And it was great, it was like a new game. You know, it was horrible, uh, and there was loads of blood and guts in it, but it was, um, you know, it's based in the Resi uh, 7 engine, just plays like a new game. Mm -hmm. Some kind of, you know, you recognise the, the places and everything, and it gives you that kind of sense of, ooh, yes, the past, but nice the past. And then, when we got back to the office, we wanted to make a uh, comparison video, so booted up the original Resident Evil 2, and my experience of it was, like, genuinely extraordinary. Just You just forget. So I watched about two minutes of like incredible pre-rendered cutscenes of like people <laughs> being astonished the zombies were happening. Um, and then there's a little bit of text, <coughs> fades to black, some incredible coincidences, some stuff explodes. And then like, there I am, Leon, um, just in the middle of Raccoon City, surrounded by zombies. And like I press, basically you sort of want to go left. So I pressed left to start like slowly turning around uh, on the spot, um, and then like realised really generally, like really slowly that I just oh god yeah of course like we got those uh, do you want to call them tank controls but you know like where it's up is forward no matter which way he's facing, and then left and right sort of steer him in either direction, um, and I, I you know I remember this being hard I remember playing the original Resident Evil 2 and being told just run like. Uh, don't worry, you're not going to shoot, this isn't the kind of a zombie swatting game, you're not going to be like taking everybody out, you can't really aim to do headshots, so just run through these opening screens. Um, even well, you ever mentioned that there were zombies there, Nick? Yeah, surrounded by zombies. Yeah. Yeah, and on the next, and on the next screen. So I get off the, so like there's three screens to safety, I kind of remember that. Um, so I get off the first one and I've been bitten twice already, then there are more zombies, and the problem is, like the other b big problem I'm having is that the back, like, because, you know, we're in a different age here, so the graphics are very much, we've made you quite a nice pre-rendered background, mm -hmm. and then you, like, you and the zombies move. Everything else is still. That's how, like, you know, that's how they made it look, like, 3D, but none of it's really live as a setting. But what it means is you have to sort of guess where you can move and where you can't. The actual movable space in those first couple of screens of Resi 2 is, like, you know, an inch and a half or whatever. So I'm, like, careening into cars and just, like, shop fronts and stuff and getting murdered by zombies and I obviously I die really quickly like I probably get halfway to the gun shop where that man that doomed man is living and I die Spoils. and I'm like fair enough I'm just gonna you know I'll do that again you just see that. I'm at the menu screen at the like the top <laughs> screen <laughs> and I'm like Jesus god yeah of course it's got like a save system where you have to find ink ribbons yes, take them to a typewriter and there's like so saving oh, the game is a consumable which oh, is quite cool word. But also, like, I just, because I hadn't ever saved, it just was like, oh my god, that's extremely brutal. It's tense though, isn't it? 
Uh, yes, yeah, it is. I like that a zombie from off screen pulled you into another screen. Yeah, I know. Good. Yeah, the camera angle changing is crazy. That's the other thing. There are things that I, you know, Leon is like, you'll have like that crazy kind of high altitude angled camera shot. And it will, and it what, what, what it will mean is you're really close to the camera and it looks really cool and like horror movie esque. What it also means is there's a zombie which is a foot away from my face and I can't see where it is. A so foot I can't away really from my aim. face? Leon and Kyle we're can see all much gonna more die! Sometimes he looks at stuff and you're like, you know, that zombie's definitely still alive. Yeah. You know, if he's looking at the ground over there. But no, you're like, definitely the camera angles are like that. You go in and the artistry of the game is, you know, the. The fact that it's making fairly generic environments just look a bit different and a bit interesting. And like suddenly it's scary to walk up a, an alleyway because you're right back here and you're walking into the distance further and further away and you can't see around the corner. That is cool. Um, it's much more the controls and the instant menu restart that made me be like, I do. I maybe don't miss this. <laughs> the game I'm going to talk about then is actually, I think the first, let's say second game I ever played on PlayStation. Okay. The first game was Tekken. I remember, I remember your story and you beat your older brother. Not my older brother, Rob, I'm an only child. Oh, that's right. It's my best, my best <laughs> friend's older brother. My best friend's older brother. So yes. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> remember these key facts about each other. I'm still quite impressed you remembered the story. So yes, it's, it, it again involves my best friend Ross. It was his PlayStation at the time mm -hmm. I didn't have one. I used to go around his, his house every day after school and we used to play Tekken or Shockwave Assault. Has anyone Ooh. played Shockwave Assault? Shockwave, Shockwave Assault. Assault. No. <laughs> Shockwave Assault. That's the first time you've even heard of this Shockwave game. Assault. It it's, um, <laughs> it's kind of like a 3D Space Assault? Invaders, which mean? actually isn't doing enough justice. Oh it's a, my God. Yeah. Oh it's a, like, my you're in the cockpit <laughs> Of like a space, not a spaceship. Oh actually, I guess that's the point. What? You're in the cockpit of, well, it's sort of a spaceship, a, a, an Earth spaceship of the future. An Earth spaceship. And there are aliens invading Earth, and you have to. You're flying above. Yeah, back when they didn't above care the ground. About you can't. You can't. You can't fly <laughs> up or down. You can just go left and right. Like a kind of like futuristic afterburner, but you know, 3D space. You've got a little cockpit. You're flying around. You're shooting aliens. Now, Shockwave Assault, as I said, this was like the first, this was the second PlayStation game I'd ever played. It is, it's such a mixed bag. It's such a mixed bag of bad and good. I mean, it didn't have a sky, Rob. There was no sky. The sky was black and it wasn't a night sky. <laughs> no, we were on Earth. The, the sky was black, as far as I'm aware. Just because they didn't do a sky. Like, they're, 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 there's no stars. Like, they just didn't render it. They just didn't do a sky. <laughs> I mean, the, the kind of, um, the kind of uh, scope of it is amazing. You start off in Egypt. You're flying above Egypt. There are pyramids. I've there's, seen like, pyramids in three or four pyramids. Well, there's... So they made the pyramids, but they just couldn't go, okay, blue, all. No, maybe it would have taken... Maybe it... I like that you that's pretended how, to know how developers yeah, were there. That's yeah. how you make games, isn't it? Right. Uh, I like the sky. We're going to make... Yeah, first thing we'll do. First, let's put in the first bit of code. Blue, all. Done. That's <laughs> so that's sort of the sky. That's uh, how you do it, though, is it? Control... Can we just know, put in Earth as well? Buttons. Earth. In. Boom. <laughs> Right, we are cooking with gas. We've already slash, got our world. Slash, sky, <laughs> insert, you know, all the coders do. Yeah. Blue, yeah. go. Clouds, insert. random, 72. There you go, clouds, done. We are, it's really it's happening. It's different. really coming together. Um, the gr the cutscenes were all those amazing old, like, FMV, like, oh, filmed real those. people in green screen, like, CG worlds. Like it started with with the, one of those incredibly cheesy oh sort of news reports word. where he's telling the news and, and suddenly like it starts shaking and he's what like, Steve, what's going on? Like back then. And then the, like the transition, the transmission ends and there's a woman I mean, on like the bridge I mean, of like a space frigate. I mean, yes, they look. Who, and she's got a radar and he like word, pings the and then and she looks down. And she's like, my god. Green. And you see a little picture of Earth and the radar and it's just like this mass of green because there's thousands oh, of green ships yeah. all We're kind of screwed here. <laughs> attack in Egypt for some reason. But the reason I have particularly uh, fond memories of it, other than that, I mean, incredible che cheesy cutscenes that you don't see so much anymore. And maybe you should because, you know, they were kind of great. I, the, I mean, they were awful, but great. It's a weird balance to strike. Maybe it's very hard to achieve that, you know, to set out to achieve cheesy, but good. Um, but 
me and my friend, as I said, we used to play this. It's not a two-player game, and I don't even know if this is a function that developers knew that existed, but we used to plug in two DualShocks, or two controllers, I don't think they were even DualShocks at that time, and he used to steer, and I used to fire. And now, I don't know if this is something they built in, I'm pretty sure this was never built as a two-player game. Um, and now the problem with that is, Obviously, it was his PlayStation, so he got to steer, which is the hard bit. He's only going left and right. I could literally just, like, hold X, and that was my job. I used to not do that to try and add some em element of skill. <laughs> you know, because I'm like, oh, I don't want to waste my, my lasers, my infinite lasers that don't overheat. You could literally just go... But I was like, no, I'm going to... Ooh, yeah, only, eight, only fire when there's a ship around. That's better. Now we're playing. Uh, I think there were also little missiles that you could occasionally fire, but you didn't have infinite of those. The problem is, I think he could also fire. So in a way, <laughs> in a way, I was just like handed the controller, <laughs> like, yeah, we're playing a game. He was probably just playing it, and I was maybe, you know, it was the player two syndrome. I'd get the slightly sticky controller or something. Yeah, the the, oh, yeah, yes, maybe yes, not, yes, a, yes, not an official yeah. controller. And I was guns, and he was also guns, but I was guns, <laughs> but I couldn't steer. Like, I, my DualShock wouldn't steer, but it would fire. It was very, very strange. And so I guess what I'm grateful for <laughs> is that that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> and that now we have actual, we have co-op and split screen and the internet. You can play across the internet. You get your own ship with your own guns <laughs> and your own steering. And uh, yeah, you don't often see those, those cutscenes anymore. Although I am a little bit sad that they're gone. I mean... That was probably the best thing about it. I like that game so much that uh, I think a year later, when I got my first uh, PlayStation for my 11th birthday, I bought Shockwave Assault. Someone had to buy it. Huge mistake. What was I thinking? <laughs> what was I thinking? It was it was not that good. I also, we played it for hours. I only remember the first two levels. I'm not sure we ever got past there. I don't know if we got bored and we just start again or go and play second again or, or what. But yeah, that's... That's as much as I remember. I don't think we ever defeated the aliens. So, sad time. So, I'm going slightly off piece here. Because right. everyone expects me to talk about Final Fantasy, and there's like one person in the comments that keeps coming at me for that. So, like, great. Cheers, mate. Don't give them the time of day. No, so instead, <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about memory cards. Oh, yes. Ooh. So, anyone who remembers having an original PlayStation or even yep. PS2, um, but mm -hmm. the 90s, the original PlayStation, you had to have a memory card if you wanted to save the game. Yep. Now, chances are, your parents didn't understand video games, so when they bought you the PlayStation for Christmas, they probably didn't buy you the memory card to go with it. Absolutely. And you couldn't save Sounds about right. on the system like we do now. So if you didn't have a memory card, you I think until I could eventually get to I lived in Abercrombie, so I had to go to Cardiff, that was where my nearest game was at the time. So I don't want to that, innit? Uh, well, it is. It was. And I had to go all, I had to wait until someone was going shopping to Cardiff right. and taking me with them yeah. so I could spend my Christmas money to buy a memory card. So I played the first like three or four hours of Final Fantasy VIII a lot. Oh, no. An awful lot. Because oh. then that fire cabin and me, we were well acquainted by the time I finally got my <laughs> memory card. Oh man. Those memory cards, one megabyte. Yeah, split over 15 slots. It was done in slots. Yeah. yeah. One yeah. megabyte, no 15 slots. Yeah, the little light cards. But you could only make, well, you could do up to 15 saves on yeah. a memory card. Uh -huh. But some games took more. Yeah. So, like, I remember Populous, the beginning, basically was a whole memory card. I love Populous. But that, you needed, like, a whole memory card for that. And when you were, like, 13 years old, yeah. not even that, I would have, no, what have I been, like, 10 or something? Maybe I can't even remember. I, mean, I would have only been like six, maths, six yeah. seven, eight years old at the time. Would have been like maybe nine. nine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like that money to then go and get, buy a memory card so you could save your game. Especially, and I did have Populous, which I could not really figure out, quite frankly. I loved it. Uh, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> the last few day checklist I was in, we talked about how bad I am at those city builders, and that yeah. has not changed <laughs> as I've got older. No. Uh, but you, you just had to have a memory card for everything. And then you'd like take them to a mate's house or like lose it. Ooh. That was the worst. Oh. Yeah, everything just gone. Like it's just gone forever. Or so to many save stories money, regarding that. you'd buy one of those like off brand ones mm -hmm. and it would break. Yeah. And you'd lose everything. everything. 
They were so, mm -hmm. like, these memory cards were so precious. I remember the PS2 cases did have a little place for you to, like, put your memory card in. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah, that's, slot, yeah. That's because the PS1 case, I always used to put mine loose in the PS1 case. I did case as well. To go to my mates and definitely it definitely did damage. around in my bag and fell out. I used to have an off-brand one that was like four memory cards in one. Yes, because you could get much bigger. Digitally select which of the four memory cards you wanted on the front. What? And wow. so it's like hold a button in, almost like a digital watch, and move between memory card one, two, three, and four. Wow. And that digital interface. I remember having one of those at one point. Immediate. Oh my god. And so like I think I had Final Fantasy Seven on slot one. Mm -hmm. Oh my heart and, feels for you. And I was stuck on slot three because I was playing Vagrant Story and that took up five blocks. That took five because Cadelka was only one block, yeah. and that was one of my favourite like oldie timey nineties JRPGs, and that was only one. Wow. I think Gran Turismo was quite a lot of blocks that was as well. Like five, yeah, I remember at least five. And that was like the more you unlocked, I think as yeah. well, like the more slots that started to take up. I had one in the end. I had one just for Final Fantasy VIII, wow. and it was like labelled the Final Fantasy VIII memory card. And I was like, do not touch it, do not remove it. I wouldn't take it to friends' houses. I was yeah. terrified of losing it. I and don't now, blame it's like. Like, imagine just the PlayStation 4 being like, oh, well, sorry, mate, Vagrant Story's taken up a third of the memory. So you just, ooh, we have to delete something now, won't you? Yeah. Or I can put them on, if I want to relive that horrific memory, yeah. I can just put them on USB stick and hope for the best. Which are like chewing gum. Or <laughs> yeah, like they're, they're gum everywhere, everywhere in my house. Underneath the sofa. It's like, oh, I found one. Yeah. Yeah, sounds yeah. Right. <laughs> so literally, it'd be like, they've got a USB stick. Yeah, 64, 64 gig. <laughs> no, but you are, you like, have you got a memory card on them? Memory stick. Oh, yeah, let me just start turning out my pockets. Yeah. Oh, here's eight. Which uh, one do you want? I've got one on my keys. Which yeah. one do you like the look yeah. of? Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, that's, that's something that, well, I remember fondly, mm. my retro-tinted spectacles, yeah. where you remember stuff in the video games in the past better than what they actually are. I am thrilled, utterly thrilled, that I no longer can lose all of my saved data by having my lunch, like the, the drink that my mum packs in my lunch oh, bag, no. open and flood my backpack, oh, thus killing my memory card. Times. God bless the cloud. So a game or some Hard games I'm going to talk about um, that I played in the 90s and that have made me realise how brilliant games are now um, are the Tomb Raider games <laughs> oh. on PS1, oh, yeah, which Raider I games. remember loving. I remember playing Tomb Raider I never really got very far in them. For many reasons, and I think I've told the story before of how I had Tomb Raider 3. Yeah. My dad bought me Tomb Raider 3, and I never saw past like the first area in Tomb Raider 3. <laughs> you go down the slide at the beginning, you jump over the spike yep. bit, you continue going down the slide. Occasionally I'd miss time the jump, and I'd just jump into the spikes, and that would be my adventure. I've done that! <laughs> you get down to the bottom, there's a monkey at the bottom, you shoot the monkey, and then... <laughs> I don't know what happens in the game after that because it's just it's just um, just a couple of areas that I could you know hop between. I think one had a waterfall in it. It was it looked nice and green. I was like, yeah, I'm ready to raid some tombs, but I just couldn't. I was what nine, ten. I just couldn't find where to go. I had no idea what I was doing. Basically, what it makes me feel grateful about now is if I was playing that now. There would just be like an arrow on the top of the screen, I'm like this way, yeah. come this way, or there'll be like a little objective thing telling me. Or even if there's none of that, games, if you spend too long not doing the thing, they'd be like, try doing that. Yeah, have you considered not being rubbish at the game? Yeah. <laughs> just have a little go, mm, and you'll be able to go. And there was none of that then. And you I, could Google it too. Yeah, you could Google it as well. I yeah. didn't have the internet. No. I don't. I can't, I don't think anyone. I can't remember if the internet existed back in 1990 something it eight existed, nine. It did because I remember I used to play creatures. No idea. It existed in a very yeah. primitive I fashion. Used to, I used to look at creatures. Google didn't though. I remember having a lesson about Google when I was about twelve. Really? Yeah. The we first, asked Jeeves. the first, uh, yeah, Ask Jeeves, Lycos. Alta Vista. Oh, I remember that search Good. engine. Lycos. Yahoo. Yahoo. Yeah. AOL. You couldn't ask any of those how to get past the beginning oh, of Tomb Raider three, though. No. Like, well, in my opinion. You, even if, even if you could, you would take you to some strange forum. Probably, yes. And, and it's only if someone. Dark web. One of those yeah. amazingly <laughs> written guides you get that's just all text, and they've like with drawn pictures with oh, text. Yeah. Yeah. And they write out like the Metal Gear logo in yeah, text. Yeah, in text. Oh, I used to love those. I so started cool. writing one of those. Did you? For Final Fantasy VIII. When, uh, many, many moons ago. Yeah. Like, I just wrote out exactly how I played the game. 
for no reason other than <laughs> I was bored. Yeah. Um, but other bored. <laughs> <laughs> other Tomb Raider games. Uh, fighting that one monkey, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> the last revelation I actually got quite far in, and I was quite proud of myself. Right. With no one to tell me what to do, no guide, no help, no nothing, no arrow telling me where to go. Like f- figured out all the puzzles and everything. Um, but there was one bit I got stuck at. It was called the Guardian of Semerket, or something like that. Basically, right. the Guardian of Semerket is a big boar. A boar? A big, yeah. The, like the pig. pig. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So was it just really boring? Not <laughs> boring, no. Oh um, and you're just in this corridor, and I can't even remember how you get into the corridor. I think you drop down into the corridor from a place where you then can't climb back up uh-huh. to. And it's just a long corridor in like an L shape, if I remember. And there's just this big boar running around it. <laughs> That's where I got to in the last revelation. Right. And I jumped over the boar and I could see some maybe little doors. I think maybe do I have to stand there and make the boar charge into the door? But that didn't quite That's seem to quite work. Thinking. That didn't quite seem to work. I mean, I was on, I played this level a long, 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 long time. I spent <laughs> many hours in this corridor before finally giving up. Um, I think in the end I did look it up on YouTube and you do have to make the boar charge into the door but for some reason that never quite worked for me I never quite got it right never could it was obviously very precise Hmm. that's That's another thing games are like they're quite forgiving if to activate that success state you only have to get the thing near the thing and it's like well done you've done it you've done it definitely done it and it'll activate the cutscene and I learned that playing Resi 2 original really open doors in a panic you have to be exactly the right like, spot, yeah. facing exactly the right way. Oh, this door doesn't open, okay. <laughs> and you're so used to oh, that, that kind of thing being so easy in games now that you yes. just assume, if it doesn't work straight away, yeah. that you've got it wrong or that's not a thing that's supposed to happen. Exactly. So I think I was on the right lines but never quite managed to get it just perfectly right. Yeah. And I remember my friend at school, Adam Bale, claimed he'd finished Tomb Raider The Last Revelation. And I asked him, how do you get past the Guardian of Semaket then? Yeah. And he was just like, Kill him. <laughs> 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 I have since, I have since, you know, worked out that maybe Adam Bale didn't finish <laughs> to read the last revelation. Because oh. you can't kill the Guardian of Semaket. Just a big marauding boar thing. I deliberately destroyed my sister's memory card once. I remember you saying this. Oh no. You're a horrible person. <laughs> you've, you've, you've told us this story. What was what did she do to you? Well, she was playing Crash Warped and she couldn't be N Jin. And I was like, I'll be him for you. Not as a nice gesture, but just to show her that I could. Right. I was like, I'll be him for you, but afterwards you're not allowed to save it. You're not allowed to have, like, my progress. So I beat him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she agreed to this. No! Oh, that's so cool! I was like, don't save it. I told you you couldn't save it. And she started That is so it. cool! I maliciously just turned the console off <gasps> halfway through the save, which... Um, Everybody knows. Warped, it just ruined her entire memory. Or, and not just crash, all of the saves on her memory card. <laughs> <laughs> that is pure evil. I did warn her. That is brutal! <laughs> I did warn her. Wow. Fun. Another evil thing I did to my sister. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I don't that time. Oh, <laughs> I just remember. <laughs> she started Tomb Raider The Last Revelation as well. And uh, she was in a bit, like one of the first areas. And... Uh, she got up to go to the toilet, and so I quickly, <laughs> I jumped like off a really high jump and saved it. Oh no! Tomb Raider. That is awful. <laughs> oh, that is awful. That's awful. Tomb Raider is it just oh, saved forever. So oh, every time she loaded up her game, Mom would just plummet to her death, just that over and over and over pure again. Pure evil. And I didn't admit to doing that, so she was like, "I'm oh, sorry, don't save it there." <laughs> Let me just think. I went to the bathroom. Typical sibling shit. Everything had gone back. Everything had gone back. I'm so glad you're any chance. Oh, yeah. It's the best. Yes, we nearly called this video borderline personality disorders that show how good Rob is at pretending to be a human now. (laughs) Let us know in the comments what 90s gaming quirks you can't believe we all just cracked on with. Give us a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you haven't for more of these videos every week. Thanks for watching. Oh my goodness me. Right. Let's have a look. Uh.
Uh, 90s games, greatness levels. Ah, yes. Ah, yeah. One comment here saying the length of the controller cord. They still do wired controllers today. But. My goodness me. One thing I don't. So one thing I'm really thankful for today compared to back in the day is I mean the demo discs I mean the I mean the demos you got for free you got you, you get the demos you play a couple of levels over and over and over again and you have to pay full price to get the game and then these days you've got these programs like your your games with gold your PlayStation Plus free games and you get the and you get the entire game for free, just like that. You just got to make sure you get it within like the set time period. But <sighs> wow, wow! It's amazing how. It's amazing how those videos can help you. Right, anyway, that does it for today, folks. If you enjoyed what you saw, as always, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptized in following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the latter day scenes notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. Tom and Jerry on the left, reactions on the right. I'll see you tomorrow for Throwback Thursdays with some more Tarzan. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out. Stay faithful.